Well, everyone's continually talking about revival. Revival. Are we seeing revival at Asbury in Wilmore, Kentucky on As at Asbury University? Are we seeing revival at other campuses? And although I think that we, from the beginning, should have been hopeful for uh, a true revival in which people are being awakened to their apathy in the faith, awakened to their apathy in their prayer life, in their life in the word, uh, repenting from sins, and, and there being a true repentance, which can only be judged over time, uh, we're starting to see some fruit of the so-called Asbury revival. We are beginning to see that fruit. In fact, uh, really, this has been, uh, certain speakers have been planned to be there long before uh, this this uh, continual worship service, 24-7 worship service, uh, has, has started. Now, I know some of you are uh, I've got my, my subscribership is like tripled in the last week. So I have no idea who's following me anymore. And many of you, uh, are big time for this. And many of you are big time against this. I, I really have no idea, but let me just show you some things that we know, uh, within the hour, they're going to be closing out the final day of this collegiate day of prayer. And I am grateful when anyone is praying and worshiping God, uh, but as has been noted before, and I did another video on this, and um, uh, it's a proper criticism uh, because it's a biblical evaluation to say, well, where's the gospel? I'm not seeing the gospel preached. I'm not seeing the preaching of the word. Some will push back and say, well, there's confession of sin and there's this going on. And it's true that there's confession of sin. It seems that, uh, um, well... It does seem that maybe it's done for kind of a therapeutic sense, though, because we're not seeing much of a, a gospel presentation of sin and hell and damnation. And so I'm going to show you something here. I'm going to say something about that, though. I recorded something earlier and it didn't record my audio. Uh, so I want to say something. I don't think the length of the sermon is very uh, is is really that important. I like to see a lot of preaching and I'd like to see a great amount of preaching. But you know, Jonah went to Nineveh and he had a very short sermon. Very short sermon. I believe it was five words in Hebrew, seven words as translated into English. He said, in 40 days, Nineveh will be destroyed. In 40 days, Nineveh will be destroyed. That's not a very long sermon. What did it take me? Maybe just a couple of seconds to say it. It's not a long sermon at all, but it brought about repentance. It brought about a spirit wrought change in those people's lives. Uh, the king got off of his throne and he said, uh, he sat in sackcloth and ashes and he called for a fast for the nation. And they fasted and they repented and they turned from their sins. Uh, people say, well, maybe that wasn't a true repentance because a hundred or so years later. Well, you know what? That generation sure seemed to have a genuine repentance. And we want to see genuine repentance, but uh, there are some concerns. There are some deep concerns when we have this man, Francis Chan, coming to speak. And this is at 8 to 10 Eastern within the hour here uh, tonight. But uh, he's going to be speaking tonight, and uh, so is Rick Warren, and so is Mike Bickle of IHOP, the International House of Prayer. I don't have time to get into everything with these men, but basically, uh, I can speak for Francis Chan and for Rick Warren. They're both big time into ecumenism, big time into the inclusion of Catholics along with Bible-believing Protestant Christians. Uh, in other words, those that believe that you're saved by grace alone, through faith alone, in Jesus Christ alone, not through any works, not through any keeping of the Mass, uh, but you're saved by salvation alone, through faith in Jesus Christ. And so what are we going to see tonight? Well, there's a couple of things that we might see. Uh, we might see a big call uh, to join those in Rome, the road back to Rome, and to, to embrace our brothers and sisters, as they would say it, or to embrace our brothers and sisters 
in the Roman Catholic faith and just consider them another denomination. We must unite, 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 unite with liberal denominations, affirming LGBT, affirming homosexuality, affirming CRT, uh, embrace all of that and come together. And we do have uh, this man here that I came across who is, um, let's go to this first. I think, I don't know if he was leading worship or what, but this is, uh, he is a student at the uh, Asbury Theological Seminary, Elijah Drake. Uh, this is publicly that he's putting out there for the world on his Twitter account. I don't even have Twitter, so I couldn't even see it uh, without going to the main Twitter page and being able to see it. So it's publicly out there for the world. I guess it took until the Asbury outpouring for some people to realize that gay people are in their churches, their pews, their choirs, their worship teams, their prayer groups, their youth groups, their seminaries, and all that. And they're worthy of love and dignity and care. Well, certainly they are worthy to have the gospel preached to them. They're worthy to uh, have uh, the love of God given to them in the sense, in the same way that we give everyone the love of God. Uh, we explain the truth that God is holy. They are not. They must repent of their sin and turn and, and follow Christ. Repent of their old way of living and put their faith in Christ, as everyone must do for salvation. They must uh, stop identifying themselves in with this sin, and they must turn to Christ, and even if they struggle with sinful desires, the fact that they identify with a sin tells you that they have not repented of that. It tells you that they have not come to faith. And so I, we may see a move to uh, the embracing of LGBT tonight, or we may see a feminist move tonight, as this is a very egalitarian slash feminist uh, 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 uh seminary and university and there was uh the the president um of the seminary not the university but the seminary was speaking the other day about uh from first timothy 2 12 i believe that was a passage and he tweeted something saying uh, i'm going to be preaching on this passage uh about the role of women in leadership and some comments on that twitter thread were saying great Deal with the LGBT LGBT inclusion as well. Deal with that as well. Uh, and so we may see something like that. I'm not quite sure what all we're going to see tonight, but I think there's something big that's going to happen. And I just wanted to get a video out uh, as, a, as a warning and a concern about this is some of the fruit that we're seeing from this supposed revival. Uh, I'm glad that people are worshiping God. I'm glad that you know, well, they're singing Bethel songs. They're, 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 um, uh, I want to say that I'm glad that people are praying and I'm glad that they're worshiping God, but I'm not quite sure what they're doing much of the time. There definitely are moments where I see, uh, and I, not that I've been able to see a ton of it. Uh, some people, uh, have been able to see a lot of this, but every time I click and watch a little bit of, of, uh, just a minute or two of things. They're they're singing very self-oriented songs, uh, singing songs, you know, basically about themselves more than about God. That 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 really is what a lot of these songs, these um, Bethel type songs, uh, they are. They really are kind of like that. But then they also do sing some decent songs. So I think that there are uh, other songs mixed in there. But the biggest thing is just the fact that the gospel is not being proclaimed. Uh, and if there is a gospel being proclaimed, it's a Jesus loves you gospel, Jesus loves you gospel, Jesus loves you, without talking about talking about the love of God, without the severity of God. Talking about that's that's it's not a gospel if you can't talk about sin and hell and damnation. And I have not heard anyone say that that is being preached. Of course, I can't say definitively that it's not being preached, but there are some things we can say definitively, and that is that we have uh, some lesbians uh, leading worship. Uh, they're bragging about it. We have, uh, when you look into the seminary, they have a um, 
sexual identity department or something along those lines. I don't, it was a podcast that came across and uh, there's some deep, 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 deep concerns uh, coming out of this seminary. And uh, I, I've only scratched the surface of it just in looking at it a little bit. So uh, for those of you that are, that are, that, that think this is like the greatest thing in the world, just understand that there are deep, deep concerns with this. And this is part of a movement. And I think this could be part of a, of a major leftist movement, a major uh, ecumenical uh, Catholic inclusion movement, uh, or an LGBT inclusion movement. Uh, whatever it is, it's not good when you have Rick Warren, uh, Mike Bickle of IHOP, and um, uh, the other guy, Francis Chan, coming and speaking. So be in prayer about it. Be in prayer that people would be more discerning about this. And... Uh, and and that's what I'll end on. Until next time, God bless.